Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about the latest episode of Roa. Um, I am not going to hold you too long on this one because I thought this episode was boring. Um, I expected, I think, so much and it gave so little. We start off with Sheree at the acupuncturist again. This scene did not give me life, but we've seen a glimpse of Sheree's sister. That was interesting. We then um, continue on with Marlo, and she's talking about her day yet again with her assistant. It's getting a bit old, even though I love Marlo. hate to do this to you, but let's refresh the storyline, please. Um, Sonia again. Also not the most interesting cast member, but she's prepping and talking with her assistants about this Mommy Nation charity event that she's hosting later on in the episode. Um, a charity that she holds very dear to her heart. The spokesperson of her auction fell sick or got COVID, I believe, if I remember correctly. And the assistants say, hey, why don't you ask Kenya if she wants to hold the fundraiser? We really think with her personality that she could bring so much to the table. And that's what they do. We then continue on with Kenya's video shoot for her Kenya More Hair Care line. The little chant that is so iconic that has been in our mouths over the years. We see Croy pop up, bring some food, and we also see Manietta. And honestly, I will get to that later. I really did hope, or at least I expected that we would see Cynthia in this scene. Um, but we only saw Kenya talking with like Drew, uh, not Drew, with Sonia, and dancing with baby Brooklyn in their adorable cute outfits. But I guess production went with Roy, Croy, or whatever his name is, and left out Cynthia Bailey, our iconic, iconic ex-housewife, um, from the season trailer that they had released back in April. It, it's a shame. Anyways, um, after this flop of the scene, we go back to a Drew and a scene that felt very genuine and real to me. Other scenes are feeling forced. They're not feeling genuine. It's almost like a facade, but I have to say Drew is bringing it this season. We talk about Allison's extensive career and whatnot and so on. So that gave a lot of life to the show. And then here it comes, the dinner party, the reunion of the OGs. I had told you guys in a video I made a couple of weeks ago when we saw the trailer that these four women had more chemistry than all of the ladies that we've seen this season together. I take it back. Um, it was a mess. It was not organic at all. It felt so forced. I mean, Sheree was grasping for some camera time and some the renaissance of these OG ladies. We have a very dramatic entrance for Kim which I did like, but her coming into the group where Lisa Wu and Deshaun Snow already sat down, um, it, they, the, the ladies felt uncomfortable with each other. I don't even know how to put it, how I can put this into words, but it fell off. Something was off about this scene. And a lot of people have said this on Twitter as well. It kind of flopped. 
Um, one ex cast member that I was surprised with though was Lisa Wu. Kind of brought it. I mean, I wouldn't be mad. If we would see Lisa Wu in the future as a friend of, maybe, perhaps. Um, Kim was just so phony, kind of unbearable. I really wanted to like her in this scene. And I really wanted to feel as if the OGs were spicing up a few things. But... Sadly, I just, I couldn't. It's stronger than me. It, I expected so much and got so little. We have a little flashback of a couple years ago where Kenya and Kim fought over the uh, comments that Kenya made about Kim's daughter, I think Bri Brianne, Brielle, or whatever her name is, um, that Kim made first though so didn't understand their whole falling out there um then kim says some really disgusting comments about kenya being alive still which i thought were so childish and unnecessary even though and i i had so much hope but no it flopped we then go back to sonya and please I love this woman. I feel like if I would know her personally, I would get along with her so well. But she's just not bringing it, even though she's laying it all out for us to see. The conflicts with her sister, yeah, they're very real, very raw, but something's missing. The charity is starting. All of the ladies sit down. The only scene about like 17 and a half seconds where we see all of them together group scenes that are not being filmed right now in this season at all which upsets me so much um we see sheree getting an award for best mother whatever that was uh marlo commenting on kenya's dress marlo's confessionals are funny but I will have to give her that, even though she kind of flopped this episode. Um, Kenya raising the fundraiser from 50k to 100k. Them successfully um, pocketing about, I think, $78,000, which is very huge for this charity. I mean, they expected 50k not even and the fact that kenya did that i really do hope that sonia paid her something and yeah the rest of the episode is actually the mid-season trailer enjoy making a movie when we get to those sections you know She acting her ass off. She's like really doing it. There's some more lights, camera action still to come. Cup and bottle! Yes! Yeah, more smoke! Y'all wanna taste some of the cuppy challenge? Yeah! Let's rock! Oh, Lord! Oh. Look at the rabbit, you guys. He got a BBL. Yes, I need that rabbit's doctor's number. Say more wine. Too so much. I still have embryos, they're marks. Plot twist, you get the baby and then y'all get back together. I don't have a problem with that. <sighs> no way, this is real. <laughs> is that my daughter or his girl? <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, you decide to reveal another baby? These men that she keeps dating, they're losers. Can we have a little conversation? This is some shady shit. Been a piece of shit and still a piece of shit. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Kenya Moore. Now you know you should know who I am. Hi. I might need to start taking him more to church. He's really into partying. I don't know if I feel comfortable with my husband. You said husband. Did I say husband? There's a man here that assaulted me. He threw a shoe at me. Keep my child's name out of her mouth. Why are you talking to me like that? I'm done! If you don't appreciate me, then I'm gonna get us divorced. What did you see? It was a kiss. 
Did you kiss her? This is work. So you're a method actor. I can't get over she's dating a woman the way she is. I ain't never kiss a girl. She was cheating with a well-known basketball player. That's what the streets are saying. Allegedly. It's hot. I don't know what I can say and not say. But don't tell me I kissed this girl. I didn't kiss this girl. I even videotaped it. some hot tea. Anyway, at the end, all I can say about this episode is it kind of flopped. It did not give as much as the promo gave, actually. And please, I, I I just can't take this anymore. These singular scenes that just feel like filler for something that isn't there. I mean, as much as I love Marlo and Sheree, I mean, I truly can't care anymore about their half-ass storylines, even though I love, love, love Marlo, and I'm kind of a Marlo apologist. I have to hold myself accountable on that one. But where are the group scenes? Where is the dynamic in the group? Where is it? I am not feeling the spark between these ladies, and I really do hope that the producers reevaluate their decisions on who they bring back for next season. Because the ratings are kind of slowly tanking again. They're not top-notch. They're not top-tier. And also cutting out Cynthia Bailey. Like, what are you doing? I mean, I mean y you gave Deshaun Snow a platform for six and a half minutes of the episode. And she w was silent almost the entire time. And you cut out Cynthia Bailey. Anyways, you guys, I'm really excited for Drew to bring it for the rest of the season. I know this is going to get juicy, judging by the mid-season trailer. And don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And I will see you guys later. Bye.